welcome to the, uh, the new Microsoft Center. It's a real pleasure to have you all here today. Um, I welcome first the uh, Commissioner for Employment, Social Affairs and Inclusion. Thank you very much uh, for being here, taking time out of his busy schedule um, to be with us today to further our joint commitment to the youth of Europe. So thank you, Mr. Andor. We appreciate your time. Uh, also, welcoming Minister Frémaux, Minister of Economy for the uh, Brussels Capital Region, uh, whose partnership with us uh, here in, in Brussels over the last three years has been helping to further young entrepreneurship in the Brussels region. I'd also like to, invite, well, like to, like to uh, welcome all of you, excellencies, distinguished guests from the European institutions, industry colleagues, trade association, friends, and I would say most importantly, the young people in the audience today. The, the, the thing with, uh, you can see all the guys in their, in their orange and blue and yellow and red t-shirts. Funny thing is, you know, it, youth is a real topic of discussion increasingly in Brussels. Um, we very rarely involve young people in those discussions. So today, uh, we're making a, you know, a really strong exception and uh, we look forward to, to their participation this morning. I'd also like to uh, welcome, last but not least, uh, my boss, <laughs> General Counsel and Executive Vice President of Microsoft, Mr. Brad Smith. It was a year ago, almost to the day, that Brad uh, really launched our commitment to the youth in Europe under the, the Microsoft Youth Spark initiative. Brad will give an update today on uh, where, where the initiative stands and look at some of the prospects for the future. We, um, sorry. We also mark this milestone, our commitment to youth, at the same time as opening, opening this uh, new Microsoft Center, the state-of-the-art facility we're in today provides the ideal stage for training and innovation, a place where governments, NGOs, and the private sector can experience firsthand some of the new technology and enabling technology that will benefit both economy and society. If we look briefly at the agenda, it's uh, extraordinarily packed. In fact, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. It might be overpacked. We'll try and stay. We'll try and stay on on track. Um, we have uh, live trainings, links to live trainings across Europe uh, with young people. We have some interesting new data from Andrew Wyckoff from the OECD. We're very much looking forward to that, Andrew. Um, we'll have an interactive debate among young people and members of the European Parliament after, after the uh, the initial coffee break. So the only other thing to say is that, uh, of course. During the breaks, you'll have the chance to, to interact with some of, the, some of the latest technology that we've installed here in the Microsoft Center. And so, without further ado, um, I'm honored to introduce a short message from the President of the European Commission, Jose Manuel Barroso. Thank you. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I regret I cannot be with you today to take part in your discussions but I'm grateful to have this opportunity to share a few thoughts with you. 2014 is a crucial year for Europe. We are starting to see the end of the economic and financial crisis. We are slowly moving towards growth. Overcoming the crisis is essential, but it is not enough. We need to create new jobs for sustainable growth. We need to create the conditions for a new type of growth, smarter, more sustainable, more inclusive. That is what our Europe 2020 agenda is about. Creating jobs is our number one priority. Giving our young generation the right skills is a necessity. This is essential for our long-term competitiveness in the world. The European Union lags behind its competitors in some areas. Our proportion of researchers, young innovators, and of citizens with higher education qualifications is fall falling short. And it is estimated there will be nearly 1 million new ICT communication technologies jobs 
vacancies in the coming years. Without ICT, there is no innovation. As Albert Einstein once said, if you always do what you always did, you will always get what you always got. We cannot make progress and have sustainable growth if we do not successfully bring together and implement the triangle of research, innovation and education. We have taken work forward under the Grand Coalition for Digital Jobs, European Institute of Innovation and Technology, EIT, Erasmus Plus. And last week, we have announced ways to improve the EURES job search and the mobility network across Europe, just to mention a few key European Union initiatives. Implementation is vital. Member States must seize these opportunities, such as dues guarantee schemes and the Horizon 2020 program for research. But for this, we also need private sector support. That is why I wholeheartedly welcome today's opening of Microsoft's new center to drive innovation, startup companies, and youth employment. I welcome Microsoft's efforts and positive engagement in the Grand Coalition for Digital Jobs and the European Alliance for Apprenticeships. Ladies and gentlemen, our younger generations need to be given the right jobs and opportunities to learn and improve their skills. Together with the private sector, we need to ensure that research, innovation and education deliver sustainable growth for all in Europe. That way, Europe will produce its next generation of leaders, businessmen and women, researchers and innovators. That way, Europe will keep its place in the world and be the source of new ideas and the place to deliver them. Let's put Europe young generation at the very heart of that. Thank you. Now I'd like to invite Commissioner Andor to give the keynote. Good morning, uh, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, after the Commission President, Mr. Barroso, I would like to convey to you a live congratulation on behalf of the European Commission. I congratulate you uh, on the opening of the new Microsoft Center. Um, I wish uh, that it trains many young people and also helps to inspire and develop many, many entrepreneurial uh, projects. Uh, what I have already seen uh, since um, I entered the building uh, this morning, um, a lot actually connects very well with uh, the employment and social agenda of uh, the European Union. One of the slides which I saw was um, about gender balance, uh, the necessary inspiration uh, for young girls to engage in uh, uh, STEM uh, subject, ICT, and, um, and close this gap uh, that has been uh, uh, so significant in the past years um, in, um, in ICT professions. Uh, but also the winner of the prize uh, was a project um, uh, to help um, uh, save the lives of firefighters, and um, I'm the one who in the Commission is responsible for uh, the health and safety at the workplace, and this is exactly an area where need, we need new ideas, new uh, solutions in order to uh, save many lives, save uh, uh, the health, uh, protect the health, <coughs> and also the safety of many workers in the EU. So it is immediately an example where the contribution can be uh, made to uh, the future uh, EU strategy on uh, occupational safety and health. But in more general terms, I would like to thank Microsoft for the great contribution that has been made so far already uh, to the Grand Coalition for Digital Jobs uh, that has been mentioned by President Barroso in his address. And another uh, very important uh, initiative the Commission made, and we have already been working together in this context too, that's the European Alliance for Apprenticeships. Let me say a few words about both initiatives. Um, the Grand Coalition for D Digital Jobs was launched in the context of um, our employment package two years ago, uh, which highlighted three key sectors where despite all the hardships of the recession and the continuing um, uh, European financial crisis, we expect job, job growth to come. 
and we would like to encourage investment in human capital, in skills in these uh, particular areas. And one of the three is uh, ICT, which is not just a sector in itself, but um, um, a, a, a set of skills which will be required practically in all professions, in all sectors in the future. And we can only encourage, but also support uh, the investment in this area. Um, and we have to uh, uh, promote this grand coalition, which is not only an EU-level initiative, but now already in 10 member states, there is also on the way uh, a, a creation of such uh, a grand coalition. So that uh, helps to translate an idea which emerged on the EU level into the practice um, within the member states. And I couldn't agree more that this is most important for the young generation. In the last few years in the Commission, we have focused um, uh, particularly on the employment opportunities of the young people, because this very long financial and economic crisis uh, unfortunately hit very unfairly and very disproportionately the young generation especially in some of the European countries of uh, the southern uh, periphery. Um, our uh, youth employment package included um, a proposal for establishing a European Alliance for Apprenticeships, which was launched uh, uh, last summer. And this is also about helping to spread the best existing models, because uh, the European countries um, uh, are quite uneven what concerns um, uh, vocational uh, training and how the young people gain the, work, uh, the first work experience. Uh, the best models uh, which uh, do exist in countries like Germany, Denmark and a few others can be transferred uh, to others. But the best is if we transfer uh, this with the involvement of uh, uh, the social partners and organizations um, of um, uh, employers, but also employees, and also the companies themselves that play a crucial role in all that. Microfo Microsoft is increasing uh, the number of ICT training offers. So it's not only an idea, but a very concrete <laughs> process, we know, and we very much welcome this. Uh, this is uh, exactly what is needed by the entire industry increasing industry-led training and providing a greater number of entry-level jobs as well as high-quality apprenticeships and internships in Europe. You probably saw uh, that the European Council of October asked for the strengthening of the Grand Coalition. For this, we need that companies particularly large ones, contribute with ideas, resources, and actual provisions of trainings and work opportunities. A close cooperation between governments and business is also crucial in order to make the use guarantee a reality. This is also a commission initiative which was mentioned by President Barroso. Because the member states understood that the youth employment crisis is just extraordinary. Uh, there was a very quick process uh, to agree among them on the basis of uh, the terms proposed by the Commission in order to deliver in all EU member states a youth guarantee. That actually means that no young person should be allowed to be unemployed for longer than four months after leaving school or becoming unemployed. Why we insist on this? and why we ensure that there will be further additional financial support from the EU budget for this purpose. It is because this happens to be the best trained young generation. Um, the skills, uh, the level of education, the quality of the education, the investment uh, people have made uh, is probably uh, the greatest uh, so far. Nevertheless, the entry to the labor market, finding the first proper job, uh, turned out to be just uh, so difficult in the recent years. That has to be uh, uh, addressed in all countries. Uh, we also work for a proper European labour market uh, to ensure that if young people don't find the job easily in their own neighbourhood, they should be able to look for jobs in other countries. But we have to ensure that all EU countries, all EU regions also improve their own potential for economic growth and also job growth 
and this would help to balance out the economic but also the job opportunities across uh, the member states. In order to implement the use guarantee, uh, the, 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 the member states had to develop their um, implementation uh, programs and um, almost all of them uh, have completed it um, uh, by the deadline and now uh, the operational programs um, are being developed in order to ensure that the money can also flow from the EU budget um, in order to support um, all this. But we know that money uh, does not resolve the problems alone. We also need the people who understand what uh, needs to change on the ground. We also need all different actors, um, but especially uh, entrepreneurs, in order to ensure that uh, the new cycle of uh, investment and the new cycle of economic recovery in Europe will also bring a qualitative change, qualitative improvement in terms of how the economy performs and how uh, we manage to improve uh, social cohesion, ensure that it's not only economic performance, but also a high level of uh, social stability, which we can achieve. I believe we can work uh, on this uh, together uh, in the future, and would like to uh, congratulate you again for uh, uh, inaugurating uh, this center, and I wish you uh, all the best for 2014 which is a transition year uh, for uh, the European institutions, Parliament, but also the Commission. But I'm sure these remarkable initiatives will be uh, taken over by those who come in uh, uh, after the institutions transform this year. Thank you very much for your attention.